What's going on, Flames Nation, and welcome to the Sea of Red football podcast. I am Richie Longshots, and I am live from Starksville, Mississippi, this Tuesday evening. Uh, what, what, wait, a sec- wait a second, Richie. That looks like your house in New Jersey. What? You're, you're telling me I'm not in Starksville, Mississippi right now? Well, I guess anybody can Photoshop anything and make it believable, right? Is that what we've I, learned today? Are you telling me that just because something's on the internet, it doesn't mean it's true? Yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. So, so I think I think should we just address this head on, Richie? I think we should jump into it, and then we'll jump into the stuff that's real. But go ahead, John. You're you're you. you if anyone knows the truth, it's you. So, just first of all, just because you see something on the internet, like Richie's saying, doesn't mean it's true. Don't believe everything you read. Didn't we learn that from Abraham Lincoln, or was it Al Gore? Yes. I don't remember which one. One of but, them, basically. But yeah. but anyways, that that whole you know, graphic going around is someone, att- uh, uh, their attempt to troll the Liberty fan base. That's all it is. It's a non-Liberty fan that, that's attempting attempting to troll us. And and let's just, you know, take a step back and, and think about the facts. The facts are that Liberty is a very good job, right? I mean, Coach Chadwell is making right about $4 million a year. Uh, you know, the Mississippi State head coach that just got fired uh, was making about the same thing. So he's not leaving for money to go to Mississippi State. So anyways, the Liberty job is a very good good job. It's an attractive job. It's top, I would say it is a top 20 to top 30 job in the entire country just based on the amount of resources that that Liberty's getting, the the amount of f- the facilities that are there for him, the support he's going to get and you know not to mention the salary. So and, and there's no pressure. I mean you're you're coaching in a conference USA. There there's no pressure there. So it, if and when coach Chadwell leaves, it'll be similar to to what we've learned over the past 4 to 5 years with with coach Freeze. It's going to be for for a, a job where you can go and win a national championship yeah. or where you think you can go and win a national championship. So get back to me when a Clemson comes open, get back to me when a Tennessee comes open, get back to me when a Florida, Florida state comes open, uh, Mississippi state. Thank you. But no, thanks. And, and the, the general public doesn't realize that they don't get that they're, they're not at Liberty. They're not living in, in what's going on at Liberty. And Liberty's head football coach is not going to Mississippi State. We've already surpassed that as far as not in terms of of job recognition or job profile, but you're just not leaving Liberty to go to Mississippi State. Oh, we're done talking about the stuff that's fake. We're done talking about the stuff that is fugazi, fugazi. What's real is the fact that we are 10 and 0. Liberty Flames are 10 and 0. And if you're excited about that, like we are, like and subscribe. Thank you as always uh, for checking us out. But yes. 10 and 0, Liberty Twitter said it best. Uh, put a dime in the jukebox, baby. We are 10 and 0, coming off of a whooping of Old Dominion. And I was there, uh, as was John. It was an, just an awesome experience. The tailgate was great. It was packed uh, the entire time. And the game was even better uh, from the opening possession all the way through. Liberty absolutely dominated. Uh, really could go into details, but I think it speaks for itself. And uh, for those who are watching live, again, thank you. You can see on the screen the college football ESPN Power Index. We are now up to 47. 47, and that's just not G5. That's not just some school. That is all the schools in the nation. 47th out of 133? Yeah, 133. And we're the second highest ranked g5 team in the country second only to smu and we'll get into that a little bit more i got an article coming probably going to drop uh tomorrow wednesday that that kind of breaks down the top six or seven teams in contention for that new year six spot and as i've kind of tweeted out over the past couple days liberty's resume is as good if not better than everyone that's in contention you can throw out all your strength of schedule metrics but the bottom line is there's no single team that we're competing with for that bid now of course we have to win the conference championship of course we have to win these next few games but there's no other team that if you put a blind resume of theirs next to liberties that it's better it, it just doesn't exist only only thing people can say is point to the the strength of schedule but that's just one metric in a large number of metrics and uh but yeah second highest ranked team in in the g5 in the uh in the uh, espn fpi yeah and people are out here acting like uh, Tulane and SMU and JMU have beaten 
world beaters. Like they have multiple wins over power five. And, and that's really not the case. I'm they, not don't. Gonna they don't. They don't. To, Richie, you're going to get me fired up. Tulane has <laughs> one win over a team with a winning record this season. SMU has zero. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't want to hear it. I mean, their strength of schedules, right, both of them are right around 100, you know, give or take 10 spots. So it's not like they're they're playing world beaters. And, and anyways, we could we could talk about this all night. But, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, let's go back to that ODU game real quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, an, a statement was made. I mean, it was 35 to nothing. Uh, 35 to three, I guess, uh, midway, late second quarter. And Sad I mean, Liberty was just, yeah, Liberty was just firing on all cylinders. You could tell that Coach Chadwell and the team took it personally, the disrespect that they've gotten to this point in time, as far as in the rankings and the lack of being ranked and, and, and those sort of things. So it was, it was fun to see the defense was, was playing elite. The, the offense was playing elite. And, uh, it, it, it was fun to see. And I wish it would have carried over. Uh, for a full four quarters, I know it's hard to to stay at that level for a full sixty minute game, but you know it would have been nice if the, if the final score got up to fifty five to to ten or something like that. But hey, yeah. you know thirty eight to ten, we'll take it. It's the it's the most points that ODU has lost by uh, all season, uh, including the beloved Dukes of Harrisonburg. Uh, you know, so it, it it's it's been a it was a good good Saturday, and, and I know Richie, you were going uh, bananas in Camp Cabana Nine, isn't that right? It was. There was at one point, you know, I'm not going to lie, when the, the score was uh, 38 to 3 or w whatever it was. And, and if you didn't watch the game, Old Dominion scored a touchdown right at the end. Uh, so really, oh, range. Uh, we were all watching the Tulane game. We had, we, there's, there's a TV in the cabana, and we were all like watching the game. Uh, there, but great game. Uh, again, another game, 125 yards. Uh, passing was able to do a little bit of everything. Would love to see more of a complete game, a little bit more in the second half. But again, once you're up big, got three more games to go, or you know, four more games to go. Uh, you don't want to show everything just yet. You want to hold, keep keep everything a little close to the vest. Not going to bust out that shot play, that trick play. Uh, some of the stuff that you might be working on that you that, that you don't want to put on film yet. So, no problems with that for me. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is as we've kind of alluded to without hitting directly, is that, you know, we're – we're going, you know, we're not just playing against our opponent. We are playing against our opponent, but we're also playing uh, against the style points. Like we need to not just win, but we need to win by a lot. It can't, we can't even, you know, to say a 38 to 10 win this coming week against UMass, that's not what we need. We need a, a 55 to nothing win over UMass. But, uh, you know, a, as you see here on the screen, it is locked in. Liberty against New Mexico State. That's Friday night, December 1st at Williams Stadium. Make sure you get your tickets. They're on sale to the general public now. Uh, I've already gotten my tickets. I, I know uh, th there'll be a good crowd there. So so make sure you get your tickets for that one. We got to got to show out. There's only going to be what seven or eight games that that weekend, and uh, maybe the only one on Friday night. So so make sure we uh, make make sure that uh, you know Williams Stadium is looking at its best and and uh, show out for for all the nation. And and I love the storylines. I, I we're not going to talk about it much, but. I love the storylines of this game. You know, you go back to, to what happened last year at the end of the season and and just how much has changed in, in the in the last year. And and uh, New Mexico State's got to play Auburn this week. So so some storylines going on down there in the Plains. And and then they've also got Jacksonville State next week. So a couple of tough games for them. But uh, December 1st, Liberty, New Mexico State, you got you got to win that to, to even be in the contention for uh, for the New Year's six spot. Exactly. One loss and it's. It's done. So uh, it is all fine and good for us to be talking about this, talking about you know, where we could be going, cotton ball, all the stuff. But at the end of the day, if a loss does come, whether it's UMass, uh, UTEP, or in a conference championship game, then we're going to be in uh, not dealing with this anymore. So, John, you want to kick it over to our uh, next two groupings? Yeah, I think we're going to bring in our guys 5-5, uh, five, five, Brennan Schlittler, and also Jason Porter. Let's get it. How are we doing tonight, Brandon? Doing pretty well. How are you? 
Good, man. Hey, uh, before we go too much further, I want to address something that we just saw, and that is the fact that you look much better in number 55 than Richie Longshots does, just for the record. I think he looks pretty good, but I, I can't, uh, can't disagree there. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all happy about that. Well, hey, man, congratulations. Another huge, uh, huge weekend coming, coming in the rearview mirror now looking back. Um, take us through what, was, what everything was like in the locker room, celebration, all that good stuff. What was the feel after the ballgame? Uh, I think we kind of knew it was coming, uh, obviously got up to a big lead. So, um, we really just, we wanted to put it on them pretty bad, but we didn't do too great in the second half of doing that probably could have finished it out better, but, uh, to jump out like we did, uh, that's always great. They're a team that you let them hang around and they can make it dangerous quick. So I know we mentioned last week, uh, what was it like six or seven, maybe eight of the last games have all been decided by a score or less. So. Uh, anytime you have a team like that, you got to kind of take their hope immediately or make it be in it. So um, we knew they were a good club and they got some good players. I know 42 of the linebacker is at like 150 tackles already on the season. He had like 180 or 190 last year. So they got the dudes to, to play and be in those big games if you let them. But um, just coming out and hammered on them early, took their hope away. We put we call that uh, putting the nail in the coffin. So. Yeah, you guys definitely did that that on Saturday. It was a lot of fun to watch, and and especially that first half. That was as good as I've seen a Liberty football team play maybe ever, but certainly in quite a while. But, uh, Br Brendan, you know, w we watch college football all over the country, right, and and I always have. And and it seems like there's always, you know, teams that, that have these, you know, slip-ups where they, they lose a game that was unexpected or, you know, they might have been a 30-some point favor. I mean, we saw it at, uh, with Liberty against Louisiana Monroe a couple years back. And you lose that game, you're unexpected, and and uh, it, but but it seems like you know, and again, I, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but through the first ten games of this season, it seems like Coach Chadwell and his staff has been able to uh, keep this team locked in and laser focused on the task at hand each and every week. Uh, from your vantage point, what have you seen that that you know has allowed you know you guys to 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 be able to focus each and every week on on that game and not worried about you know the outside noise. Yeah, so they did a great job of making each week its own week. Uh, we have our own celebration, our own theme, our own word of the week, uh, and just the whole message of go one and know. There's been way less chatter of what's to come for near six and bowl games than I've ever seen in the locker room. It's been way more focused on what what we have now, and that's a testament to the program they have and what they've you know implemented. But um, I mean, it, it is hard. We, I think we already have more wins this November than we did the last two November. So uh, that's, that's always a plus, but I think for us, uh, we're starting to lose what happened before and learning to win in November. It's, it's hard. You're banged up um, out of conference games kind of mean, I mean, conference means the most now and these out of conference games, if you slip up, like it can ruin your, your bowl, you know, resume. So there's a lot on the line and, but they've definitely uh, – I could say they've done a great job, but the proof's starting to become the put-in now, so hopefully we can continue to do that. Brendan, I've had on my uh, sheet here to ask you for the last three weeks so something that popped up in one of our comments uh, during last week's broadcast, and that's just about you, man, about your rehab personally, if you don't mind. We've been tracking your progress throughout the course of the season and stuff. Saw a fantastic video that your dad sent me of you on the Ultra G, which is a – anti-gravity treadmill thing and you were grinding and sweating and dripping just like you should be but uh, get us caught up on how you're doing man how rehab's going and uh how how, how you're feeling these days yeah so uh, about three months out post-op and uh, i just got cleared last week to start doing some individual drills so just doing those as tolerated but uh got to put on the pads and the helmet just to do some drills with the guys and that's always a blessing because you're in the corner doing your own thing and then you get to be out there with them so uh we're still a couple weeks out but uh getting closer so well, uh, that, that's exciting. We hope to uh, be able to see you back on, out on the field soon. Uh, Brendan, R.T. Rogers is uh, always a, a proud supporter uh, of this segment, Live with 5-5. Five Five. Uh, you got the hat on as you're rocking it for those watching us live tonight on Twitter, YouTube, or, or Facebook, or the, the recording of the show. Uh, give us a little bit uh, uh, more into uh, R.T. Rogers and who they are. Yeah, R.T. Rogers is owned and operated by Liberty alum Greg Rogers, uh, based out of West Virginia. Uh, main delivery areas of Virginia and West Virginia. So they sell fuel, lubricants, tanks, and equipment. Uh, responsive, reliable, full-service fuel fuel provider, sorry, uh, with the winter months coming up. 
uh, big need for that. So hit them up at RT Rogers. Uh, they'll take care of you. So Brendan, looking at uh, UMass this week briefly, uh, you know this is a team that that we've played every year. You've been here. I think this is what the sixth straight year we we've played the Minutemen, and and uh, you know Liberty's had a lot of success, won the last four games in that series. But this team maybe is playing with a little bit of confidence. They won two straight, coming off a bye week, and I was watching their uh, press conference for their their uh, coach Don Brown uh, earlier today, and and uh, he said that they're they're you know, playing with a lot of confidence and, and having those two full weeks to, to heal up at this time of the year and, and to be able to, to game plan and study film on Liberty can certainly, you know, benefit them. You know, what are some keys that you've seen from, from UMass? What does Liberty need to do to, uh, to uh, you know, keep the Minutemen at bay on, on Saturday? Yeah, so I think a lot of times Liberty fans, when they see UMass, just circle that as an easy dub. And the truth is, I used to follow uh, Michigan football closely because I got to go to a game in high school. And uh, Don Brown was a defensive coordinator. Watched a bunch of videos of him firing the boys up, and they had a great defense with some some great players a little bit ago. And now that he coaches at UMass, you can see his players play with that tenacity. And um, that's a hard place to win, but they've been digging and scratching and clawing. They've taken some teams to OT. They beat New Mexico State. They beat Army. Um, and they are playing with momentum. So I think our respect for them is high for sure um, inside the locker room. But Doc, uh, Don Brown's nickname is Dr. Blitz. Uh, he loves to send kamikaze missiles left and right, just bringing the corner and the safety and the will. And he, he brings everyone at all times. So um, having our eyes up, making sure we're disciplined, communicating where people are coming, it's going to be a big thing. And uh, I trust our coaches have a great game plan. Um, you know, it's always – easier to run blitzes on certain offenses and I don't know what they're going to do with us but we'll find out when we get there and uh, make adjustments as needed but we respect them and we know they're going to blitz a lot that's about it right now. Brandon one of the stats that I like tracking here this year is time of possession and uh, we've dominated time of possession averaging uh, looks like 33 minutes uh, time of possession and UMass is coming in kind of close behind that about 30 minutes how how important is time of possession? How do you disrupt something like that when they're going to be taking their time on the offensive end as well? Yeah, I know when we went to go play Arkansas and NC State, a lot of those teams that were power five, uh, we wanted to control the clock and make it a close game at the end. So that's probably something that they're thinking also. So getting those dirty runs, those three, four yards, we're going to have the big ones. The dirty ones are what matters. That's what moves the chains, staying ahead of the chains, um, sit out of third and long is going to be big and just fighting for every yard. Just extending those drives is going to be huge because uh, you never know when you're going to be in a dogfight. And it just pops up out of nowhere sometimes. And you got to do the little things to make sure you come out on top. Well, Brendan, thanks as always for for joining us uh, this week and, and on the podcast this uh, this week. And hoping to uh, finish the season out on a high note and uh, have a good uh, next few weeks and, and go into the bowl season strong. Uh, but appreciate you uh, joining us as, all, as always, Brendan. All right, thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. So, uh, JP, if, if I'm selling a property, what type of uh, expenses should I be prepared for? Yeah, that's a good question, John. One of the things that I always talk to people about as we're having a listing presentation, talking through that, is I want them to be able to estimate what their proceeds are going to be. And that's an important thing to uh, do during an interview process as you're interviewing a listing agent. And so one of the things that I use is just uh, what I call the rule of nine. And it's 9%. And it's usually about as high as you can possibly go. And the thought process is with the sale price of your house, you're looking at 3% to the other agent, um, the buyer's agent, 3% to the listing agent, and then 3% potentially for closing costs that the buyer may request of you as the seller. So taking 9% is super conservative, and uh, usually it's less than that, but it's a good way to estimate uh, what, your, what part of your bottom line may be before you pay your mortgage and repair costs and things like that. Yeah, well, it's always good to to know what you're getting into ahead of time, right? So, uh, appreciate you breaking that down for us. And any of yes, uh, you, li any of you listening, you can reach out to Jason. His email address is on the screen there. Jason Porter Real Estate at gmail .com for any of your real estate needs. Thanks as always, Jason. Appreciate your time. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. All right, and I think we got an ad coming up now for Ironclad. Uh, they they were at. Listen, they were at the the tailgate on Saturday, and uh, we had some great ironclad coffee. And then also, uh, they brought out some sweets, man. They had some some uh, croissants and muffins, and I mean, these things were were huge, and, and they were really good. and And appreciate their support. But uh, let's go ahead and and play this ad here. 
Virginia's best and most flames friendly coffee comes from Ironclad Coffee Roasters. Ironclad Roasters serves up their beautiful beans at two cafes in Richmond, where you can enjoy the craft roasted specialty beans from anywhere in the country by visiting www.ironcladcoffee.com. Place your order there and it will be directly shipped to your doorstep. Whenever you find yourself in the capital of the Commonwealth, pay them a visit at one of the two cafes in the Richmond area. Iron Class owners, the O'Rourke family, are proud Flames Club members and season ticket holders. And now they're pleased to sponsor the podcast from a CRA. Hop over to www.ironcladcoffee.com now to get your Virginia's best specialty coffee headed your way. Shout out Jason Porter and Brendan Schlittler for that. Yes, I will admit that I do not look as good in the, the 55 jersey as Brendan does, but that's okay. I'm not bitter. I'm not angry that he beat me in cornhole with his dad 21 to nothing on Saturday. I'm not bitter. I'm not angry about it. Not at all. But we are excited to, to move over and bring in one of my favorite uh, reoccurring guests, and that is a man who has done it all. He is rocking a, a Fire Flames Liberty football sweatshirt uh, for those who are listening later on. He is Kyle the arm and Kyle, how we live in this Tuesday night? What's up, fellas? It's good to be back. You know, it's been a few weeks, uh, but it is it is great to be back with you two talking Flames football. We're always happy to have you. And uh, what are your thoughts? You know, you said you haven't been on in a couple weeks. The win streak continues. Uh, what have you seen from the Flames during that that uh, that stretch? Yeah, I mean, I think they just continue to get better. You know, I think that's what we are seeing is that they just continue to get better. And and that is what you want from a football team is as the season goes on, because it is a long it is a long season. It's like Groundhog Day, Groundhog Week. It's the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and I think that what we're seeing is that they just continue to improve. Caden Salter continues to improve. The offensive line continues to improve. I don't know how you can improve from what they have done, but it feels like they do. And then the defense, I mean, last week, you know, everything prior to the game, everybody was talking about, you know, maybe uh, out having to outscore ODU or, or uh, it's going to be a close game because the defense is going to give up points. I mean, the defense is improving. They're finding ways to get the ball, um, create turnovers. And then it's a, you know, bend don't break mentality. You may give up a couple of may give up some chunks down the field, but, you know, that red zone defense is the most important. And when you keep teams out of the end zone, you can win a lot of football games. So I think the guys are playing really well. They're playing at a high level. Um, and it's been really fun to watch. And, and Kyle, you've uh, you've watched Caden closely and, and uh, coach quarterbacks and, and all that. What, what have you seen from Caden these past few weeks? Uh, where has he improved? I mean, you're seeing every day there's, there's at least a new award that he's a, a semifinalist for or or a player of the week or, or whatever it is. And it just seems like he's racking up those records and, and those awards and those honors. And it seems like, you know, he, he's also on the cusp of, of breaking uh, Malik Willis's records for single season uh, marks by a quarterback, total touchdowns responsible for things like this. What, what have you seen from, from uh, Caden specifically that's kind of helped him to, to continue to improve, you know, each and every week? You know, we used to tell the quarterbacks, um, you know, you want to think touchdowns and take checkdowns. Like think touchdown, take checkdown. And that way, you know, you're you're getting completions, you're checking the ball down. You know, you the running back makes one guy miss and then it's a first down. I think he's doing that really well. Um, you know, the other thing we used to always say was end every possession with a kick, either a punt or an extra point. And when you can do that, you protect the football. Um, you don't take risk, like unnecessary risk. You're not really seeing him try to force the football. He's really taking what the defense is giving him. Um, it looks like he is completely has a full understanding of uh, what is going on. Um, ooh, me and Mississippi State, I just saw that out of the corner of my eye. Nah, I'm good with Mississippi. No, no. Sorry to any Mississippi fans or Mississippi state of Mississippi fans, but I'm all right. Anyway, back to uh, Chad's out there distracting us as producer 4000. Uh, no, but I mean, he, he's just, he's doing a really good job of just taking what the defense is giving him, you know, and I think Willie Korn is, has done an unbelievable job. I think he's kind of an unsung hero of the season when it comes to the coaching staff, um, because he's just doing an unbelievable job putting our guys in the right position to make plays. I mean, I don't know how we could just continue to get wide open 
there's there's routes that we're just there's nobody standing close to the receiver and it's hard to miss an open receiver like it's and and we're just standing wide open cj daniels one of the best receivers in the country in my opinion i mean he's wide open like he is a really good player but schematically we are just scheming teams up and when you have a running team like we are top running team in the country you have to and the quarterback can run you have to put somebody else in the box in order to try to stop the run, which people are doing, and they can't. And so then it leaves one-on-one matchups for the receivers, and those guys are making plays. And so, you know, I think Caden has just done a really good job understanding the offense, reading the defenses, and just taking it one step at a time, taking what the defense gives us, and making plays. And that's what he—that's what he's done best. So real quick, Kyle, on a lighter note, I don't know what is behind you, but it makes it look like you have like dread sticking out. It's very, very funny. Uh, so yeah. you 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 were on staff. In Christmas, 20. Christmas decorations. Oh, you're one of those people. That's yeah. fine. Uh, you, you, you were on staff in 2020 when when Liberty was ranked. What's that look like in the locker room? Is that a conversation that's happening? Is is that something that they're celebrating each week or is that that Nick Saban rat poison mentality? What does that look like in the locker room? Um, the the message coming from the coaches. Well, I mean, it's a it's a acknowledgement thing from people. So I mean, it's one of two things. It's a it's a people are finally acknowledging that you know that we are a legit football team. You know, in 2020, it was a little bit different because we had you know we were undefeated and and we had some Power Five victories. So it was a lot easier for those voters to to say, oh yeah, we can rank Liberty in the top 25. Um, but I mean, it's something that you mentioned. You never, you. I mean, it's hard to win college football games, no matter what level you're at, no matter who you're playing. In order to stay focused and continue to win week in and week out is really difficult. So, I mean, you praise it for sure. I mean, you you congratulate the guys for having an achievement. I mean, you know, when we beat we beat um, Virginia Tech, I think it was the first ACC victory. You know, coaches were like, "Hey, print this thing out, like print it and frame it. You're part of history. You know, part of a big time." Uh, a big time win in, in the the history of the school, so it's something you always talk about. Um, but at the same time, you don't settle with it. You know, you're just not you're not happy with just being ranked. And once you're ranked, it's like, all right, cool, we can just chill. Um, I think that's what this team has done really good this year is like playing with a little bit of chip on their shoulder. Um, I don't know if you watched the um, the vi- latest video that they put out, but you know, I think Coach Scott said it pregame in the locker room. I mean. The only people in this locker room are the people, you know, the only people that believe in us are the people in this locker room. Now we believe in them, of course, but like national media doesn't and is, is continued to disrespect Liberty, which if you've been a fan of Liberty for however long you, you know, you have, which we have all been fans for a really long time. It's not a shocker. Like, you know, new students and maybe new fans are like, what is this disrespect? I mean, it's happened <laughs> since the beginning of time. Yep. Liberty continues to get disrespected uh, from the national media. Now we all know, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into that. And, but I think that people do have a judgment against Liberty and what Liberty stands for. And that comes to, you know, when they go to rank us, they think, Ooh, do I want to, you know, put on this, put on a pedestal, this private Christian university. Nah, I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to rank them. I honestly think that that has a lot to do with the disrespect. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does. And, and you know, it's one thing, you know, being a Liberty alum myself and, and a fan for a long time now. I mean, I, man, I, I'm going to age myself now, but I mean, I've going back to my freshman year at Liberty, it's almost been 20 years. So, so that's how old I am. But, anyways, um, you know, hearing Coach Chadwell uh, in the post game press conference, and I'm sitting right next to Mike Barber, who, who's an AP writer, uh, Richmond Times Dispatch, technically, not, not the AP, but he covers. Virginia, Virginia Tech football, and and he's, in my opinion, disrespected Liberty from his, you know, lack of showing respect to the program, showing respect by by voting. He's a top twenty five voter in the AP poll, and and uh, didn't vote for Liberty into the top twenty five until last week, and and uh, you know, it was funny to to see, and I really enjoyed watching Chadwell come into that post game press conference and lean into that. He said, you know. Everybody's talked about how great the Sun Belt is, and and we just played a team who hasn't lost by more than seven points since week one, and we just destroyed them. 
We dominated them from start to finish. So if you want to disrespect us, continue to disrespect us. But but, you know, call it what it is. Let's call it what it is. It is disrespect. And and I, I enjoyed seeing that. It feels like Chadwell, more than any other coach that that Liberty's had before, is, uh, you know, really embodies you know, who we are and what we are. I mean, he kind of, he gets it. He understands, you know, where we come from and, and some of that disrespect that, that can happen on a national stage. And, and one thing that I love about him is he embraces it and he says, Hey, nobody believes we can do it, but that's fine. We can't, we don't get respect unless we can earn respect. And, and all you can do is go out and, and take take uh, advantage of what you can do on the field. And that's what they've done through 10 games this season is they've done what they can on the field and, and, uh, you know, let the chips fall with where they may. Yeah, I mean, I think that that goes back to, you know, Chadwell from his roots. I mean, like where it almost seems like every time his team was doing good, whether that was, um, you know, at Charleston Southern, there was not a ton of respect for him or his staff, you know. And then it was like he went to Coastal Carolina and and did it and still – you know, up until last year, there wasn't a ton of chatter about him going to get another job, a big time power five job, because people were like, well, he can't run this offense at the power five level. They can't do it. Or, you know, he's got all these guys who coach D2 football with them and FCS football. They, they can't come and coach at the power five level. Like, we'll take you, Chadwell, but you got to leave all these other guys back behind. And he's like, no, I mean, this is my these are my guys. You know, these are the guys who have got me here. Uh, this is my staff. And well, I'm going to continue to win with these guys and continue to prove people wrong, no matter where I'm at. And now he's at Liberty and being a man of faith and, you know, all, all those things that he is, I, like you said, John, I completely agree. I think he's fully leaned into this. Like he feels it personally. It's like a personal attack on him that Liberty's being disrespected. He says, we, we, we all the time talking about Liberty, which is awesome to hear. It's not Liberty's being this or Liberty. It's like, we are getting disrespected, and I feel like he he feels that personally, and I think his staff does too. No, it, it, it's been great to see Chadwell buy in, uh, not just to the Liberty football culture, but the entire culture of Liberty, the mountain, uh, the way he interacts with fans, the way his wife interacts with fans. She was at the tailgate with us on Saturday. Uh, but Kyle, to, to your point, last thing before we kick it over to, to Zeke, uh, those Liberty fans don't remember when we were getting passed over for the FCS playoffs. Oh yeah, yeah. twelve that, years yeah, ago. Yeah, we were. And it was John, like, I was on the team. John was there. I mean, that was Cal remembers. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, like, there was there was years where we we should have been in easily. I mean, our, we were ten and one, lost to Presbyterian, and we didn't get in. And I remember Danny Rocco, who was the head coach at the time. We were wa- we're sitting there watching the selection show because you had to kind of wait. And he walked in to the before it even started and just said, we didn't get in like and was just so pissed. So, yeah, I mean, we have we have felt that disrespect from the very beginning. Uh, And I think that, you know, it should be something that all Liberty fans feel. And I get it that everyone is like, you know, they're pissed on Twitter and they're but hey, it's like. Yeah, we need to we need to support our football team 100 percent. And that is like, hey lean into that disrespect as well i mean there it's almost like what what else do we have to do like look at our record look what we've done look what we've done against power five teams yeah it was a different head coach but i mean it's like the same players like we've won every single year you know we haven't had a losing record since 2005 like we just continue to win and liberty athletics as a whole continues to do it but yeah i mean football feels like it's been it's been uh it's been disrespected you know and the and the thing that really annoys me there's there's a lot of things two things that really annoy me is that like when people say like talking about Demario Douglas or oh he played at Liberty he played at a you know a small school or Malik Willis isn't doing as well as we thought because he played at a small a small college it's like they have no idea what Liberty is and who we are they have no idea how the enrollment they have no idea the the fan atmosphere, the stadium, how it gets packed. I mean, you look at all the midweek games, there's nobody in the stands. Like, you watch those midweek games, there was no one there at all. And then you watch the Liberty game, and it's packed, like, every single week. And so it's not only a disrespect to our, our players and our staff, but it's a disrespect to our university, to our fan base, uh, to the athletic department. 
I mean, it's just it's it's all round. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's something else that I, I wanted to talk about too. Is is Coach Chadwell and his staff? I got a chance to to talk with uh, Coach Durkin, the offensive line coach, the other day, and uh, just the mentality that they have. Uh, they have like this angry mentality, like a chip on their shoulder mentality that they've got to, you know, go after the guy in front of them, beat them, knock them back on their on their butt uh, and, and do that to earn respect. And and I think that's something that that Liberty has maybe lacked a little bit in the past. I mean, Liberty going back even to the Big South days, Liberty was always looked at has always been looked at as the big kid on the on the block right the, you know we're the big shiny toy uh, in the conference we have all these facilities we have all this money and you know so teams are always geared up to come in and and and, uh, and beat us and we've had that even going into to the conference USA it, it's still the same thing and you know it, it's not you know, I, I think, you know, it's easy for, you know, to be in that seat as a Liberty fan, as a Liberty player, as a as a coach, as a student to think that you've made it. But Coach Chow and his staff don't feel that way at all. They're like, yeah, we have all this nice stuff and that's great. I love it. It helps us to recruit, but we still haven't made it. We haven't earned anything. We have our sights on a perfect season. We have our sights on conference championships. We don't have any conference championships at the FBS level. You know, we have our sights on CFP. We have our sights on the New Year's Six, and and we haven't earned anything. And so, so they, you know, bring that mentality over. And, and I love to see it, just that fire from them. And and uh, man, we could go on and on about this all night. I know we're following behind schedule, but uh, one other thing that I think we probably should touch on real quickly, and then I'll I'll defer to to Mr. Longshots as our host to to keep us on track, but. Um, how much this year can really help set us up for next year. We've talked about it before, but I think it's something we, we've forgotten about and I've forgotten about as we've gotten into the weeds of this season and, and comparing our resume to a Tulane and comparing our resume to, to SMU and Air Force and whoever else. But um, that, that's what we always said is, and that's why Tulane is where they're at today. That's why they're ranked in yeah, the no CFP question. top 25 yeah. is what they did last year. I mean, yeah. they can sit here and say it's not that, but – it was their win over USC in the in the Cotton Bowl or whatever New Year's Six Bowl game they played in that led to them being a preseason top twenty five this year, and they haven't done anything to negate that fact. I mean, they've won all the games they're supposed to win, and they played Ole Miss in a competitive game early in the season, so they've stayed there. So if Liberty can do the same thing, finish out fourteen zero, whether we get to New Year's Six Bowl game or not, which I would love to, obviously, but get to fourteen zero, win that bowl game against who what will be a good opponent. We don't know who it'll be, whether it's a Power Five or one of the top G5 teams, then when we go into next year, we're starting, if we're not preseason top 25, we're in that others receiving votes category already, having won 14 straight. Then if we were to do it again next year, you can't leave us out. So I yeah. think that's the biggest yeah. thing that's missed. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I yeah, for sure. I mean, how many Tulane or Liberty football games has the College Football Playoff Committee watched? Probably zero. They don't even know how to find ESPN+. Plus. First of all, they definitely didn't watch any midweek games. They were probably outside, you know, fine dining when, when we were playing. I mean, these clowns have no clue what they're doing. They ranked Iowa last week. Iowa is straight cheeks. They are terrible. I mean, this like look at them play, and they are absolutely brutal. Do they have a good defense? Yes. But their offense looks like, I mean, it just it's atrocious. And then they, they couldn't they score from like, the four yard line. And they, they need the ball. Seconds, I'm angry about it. Continue. Something. I mean, all they do is want to rank power five teams, and then they want to say, who is the best group of five team last year? How are they? Tulane's not even the best group of five team, period. If you don't want to say it's Liberty, fine. SMU is going to absolutely demolish them. Demolish them. Scott Simons, shout out, previous LU, is going to lock them up, and they are going to absolutely destroy them. Like, it's no question. So, I mean, yeah, we could go on forever, but keep the show moving, Richie. And let the record show, we are about to watch the college football playoff uh, reveal show. I have it on. We could be right. I don't know. And if we are, then I will be the first to rebuke Kyle's comments um, about them being clowns. But until then, they are clowns. Uh, but again, it could change. But Kyle, as always, thank you so much for your insight. You're able to give us uh, so much great information uh, from all the different sides of, of Liberty football. And if There's you are a, little a fan bit more, of Kyle, a little bit more fan base today, I don't know if you could feel that. No, from I love you. that. Okay. Okay. 
I love that. I did bring that, bring whatever kind of energy you're willing to bring. Uh, and if you enjoy Kyle, which we all do, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, retweet, whatever you're on. It helps us out a ton. The numbers have been growing between this and basketball, uh, and, and it has been awesome to see. And speaking of basketball, there are more sports at Liberty than just football. And we are lucky every week to have our main man, Zeke. You could call him Zach. I call him Zeke. Uh, and he's going to break down all of Liberty, all of the good stuff that's going on in Liberty Athletics in under 71 seconds. Take it away, Zeke. What's up, guys? It's Zach, and we are back with another edition of the Liberty Sports Recap. Let's get right into it. Women's basketball lost to number 10 Texas 75-57 to on Sunday. They did defeat Stephen F. Austin 84-81 to in overtime on Friday. The Lady Flames are 2-1 and on the season and will face North Carolina AT&T next Sunday. Women's volleyball lost to UTEP 3-1 to on Friday and 3 to nothing on Saturday to end the regular season. The Flames will open the Conference USA Tournament, which they are hosting with UTEP on Friday. Men's and women's cross country concluded their season at the Southeast Regional Championships. The men finished 10th while the women finished 16th. Nicholas Kiprotich for the men and Adeline Fairley for the women both earned all region honors for the Flames. Field hockey fell to Syracuse in the NCAA tournament 2-1 in overtime to conclude their 2023 season. Women's soccer also lost 2-1 in the NCAA tournament falling to Georgia to conclude their season in Athens. Men's basketball defeated Charlotte 71-59 at the Hall of Fame series to improve to 2-0. They will face Furman on Thursday to open up the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Women's swim will compete in the TYR 85 invite this Thursday at the Liberty Natatorium. This meet will be held from Thursday through Sunday. Football defeated Commonwealth rival Old Dominion 38-10 last Saturday in an absolute bloodbath. To improve to 10-0 on the season, this secures the Flames' third 10-win season ever in program history. They will look to improve to 11-0 this Saturday, hosting UMass at 1 o'clock on the mountain. The game will be televised on ESPN+. That's all for this week's edition of the Liberty Flames Sports Recap. As always, go Flames! What is good? What is good? How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, Richie, don't know what's happening with him at the moment, but we are going to roll through the Liberty line. We had a great week with CT's locks last week. Another 4-1 and one in the regular picks. UNLV, UNLV took care of business. That under was sweaty, but Iowa got it done, 22-0. Mizzou took care of business. San Jose State took care of business. Really good for the Flames. FAU cannot get the job done on our money line parlay, thanks to Arkansas. Um, just absolutely not showing up against Auburn uh, did not uh, go to go well as well. But four and one after the start that we had, we will take it. So moving on to this week's picks, we got another five, and hopefully it's going to be a good week. The first one, App State plus ten at JMU. You know my relationship with JMU and uh, the picks this year has not been good. Try to fade them. Uh, and try to get them to lose. It hasn't worked, uh, but we are going to fade them this week. College game day is coming to town. Who knows what happens with their appeal to get into the bowls and stuff, uh, but I really think App State can hang in here for this game. JMU, they've lost their best defensive player on the D-line. He's out for the season. App State's defensive strength is pass defense. JMU's offensive strength is passing, so there are some good things going on there. The other thing, App State has not lost by double digits yet this season. I was low on them coming into the season, but they've been great. They lost by six to UNC, three to Wyoming, three to Coastal, and seven to ODU. So while we're rooting for an App State win uh, to take down JMU, I definitely think they can cover, so give me App State plus 10. Next pick, Utah at Arizona. I'm going to take Arizona minus one. They've been a wagon at home. They're 5-0 against the spread at home this year, 8-2 against the spread overall. 
uh, the same as the Flames, two of the top teams against the spread this year. And I think they take take care of business. Again, Utah hasn't had Cam Rising. They still don't. Give me Arizona at home, minus one. Next pick after that. We're doing a two-team teaser. We're going back to them. Uh, first of all, Clemson is minus seven against UNC. That line makes absolutely no sense at all. Uh, Clemson must be winning that game. We get to bring that down from minus seven to minus one. I like that. And then Texas, minus seven and a half at Iowa State. They need to keep winning if they want a shot at the playoffs. So we're bringing Texas down to minus one and a half, put them together. And that's a play. UCF at Texas Tech, Texas Tech minus three. They're a totally different team with their quarterback, Baron Morton. They almost beat Oregon with him, but he's been hurt for a while. He comes back that beat Kansas last week. They're trending in the right direction. UCF, they are at their peak. We're going to sell high on them. They beat Oklahoma State by 40 points last week, and they're going to fade off a little bit. They're also 1-4 and four against the spread on the road. So give me Texas Tech minus three. And then the final regular play of the picks is going to be Oregon State minus two and a half. Uh, they're home against Washington, and they're favored. Really shocking, uh, and it's going to be a great game, but – Give me Oregon State, and again, another line that doesn't really make sense. They are wagons in Corvallis as well. They're four and one at home against the spread. Over the past couple of years, they've only lost that one game against the spread, um, and which we picked as a lock as well. It didn't go our way, but they've picked up their wagon way since then. So give me Oregon State to take care of business. Give Washington their first loss. And then finally, uh, we're not going to get too much into it for time's sake, but we have an underdog money line round round robin. If you have questions about what that is, hit me up on Twitter. I'd be glad to explain it. But four underdogs that I think can win. Miami, plus 100 against Louisville. Army, plus 175 against Coastal. UCLA, plus 215 against USC. And then finally, Sam Houston going for a three-game winning streak against Western Kentucky. So that's going to be CT's locks for this week. Moving on from there, let's go ahead and look at our results. And I'm there back. he is, Richie. You're back. Glad to have you. It's good to be here. And what a great, great timing for me to come back to because I know it's perfect. What is that? Pretty you good you did great again. Won. That's all we need to know. You did great. I I'm, I don't mean to you know to my own horn. My record, phenomenal. Unreal. Like you Unreal. can look up anyone in Barstool, anyone on the Action Network. There's no one that's rattling off. The record. Yeah, I mean, I and the Barstool people weeks. don't even claim to, most of them don't even claim to be that good at gambling. They I don't claim to be a good gambler. Either. The action people, like, that is their job. That is their profession. Yeah. And, good at, and I mean, typically a professional better, like, they're going to be like 58%. That's great for a season. Mm -hmm. You're at 65. It's unreal. So and we do want to shout out uh, mm -hmm. Jacob Webb. Great week. Great, great week. week to come in well. Six yep. and three. He was, he was texting us throughout, but, um, the big three, we got our records uh, up on the board. Uh, guest picker, three-way tie. Sam Stone, the gentleman you just saw, Zach, and Jake Webb, six and three, all up just under two and a half units. And uh, if nobody so, can beat them, we may have to do something to uh, decide that crown here at the end of the season. So we'll have to yeah, see. Yeah, we'll bowl game tiebreaker. But it is that time where we bring in a guest picker. And we were kind of going back and forth shouting out ideas and i went let's go let's just shoot for the moon let's bring in an electric factory uh you've seen this gentleman on twitter you've seen this gentleman in the comments of this podcast he and he is always tweeting one of my all-time favorite wrestlers i got a chance to meet him at the lynchburg walmart on wards road in like 2011 uh he was doing coca-cola promos for some reason but i got a chance to meet him the 16-time world champion rick flair bring him in it's not Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! Ray, how are we doing this evening? Hey, we're doing great this evening. How, how's it going, guys? I, I've got the college football playoff show on one yes. screen over here, yeah. like everybody else, <laughs> waiting yes. for the rankings to come out. Yeah, so just full disclaimer, if we pop in the top 25, we're throwing all caution to the wind. <laughs> we'll, we'll, tweet out the, we'll tweet out the picks. It's just going to turn go into like a, a party. Break, let's go like a breaking news, like yeah. just interrupt. It'll yeah, it'll be it'll be chaos. Like you'll see Chad. I think that the key Chad will pop in live um, if we are ranked. 
So that's like the the breaking this news. Is this week or not? Uh, two lanes, twenty fourth. Nope. Uh, no. 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 Kansas. Oklahoma State still being ranked is absolutely bizarre. They sick. lost to South Alabama. Yeah. They lost to UCF by forty. They've had a couple of good wins, but those losses are just unreal. Iowa just jumped up six as well. Six spots to 16th. As Kyle just said, that, that's ridiculous. Anyways. All right. Listen, out of sight, out of mind. You can only control what you can control, and we can control our picks this weekend. And as always, we kick things off with our Liberty Flames, who are facing off against UMass. They are 27-point favorites. Uh, with an over-under of 62. So, right off the bat, the three of us here live, myself, Ray, CT, we're laying the points. We think the Flames roll. Ray, what are your thoughts here? I, I'm with you guys. We're going to continue. Lose them? We might have lost them. But if he's with us, then he's all in on the Flames. Next up, New here's, Mexico's no, here's the only thing I'll say about that really quickly. I almost put in UMass plus 27 for Ray. Just because exactly. every get picker that's faded oh. us has been great. So I Richie, almost I think I had I think I had an internet glitch like you did. Yeah, happens to the best of us. So uh, you're all in. <laughs> um, Tell us you like Liberty. Break it down for us. I, I like Liberty because the motivation factor was the disrespect, as we have now just seen yet again with the college football playoff ranking. I think with that, the focus in the locker room this week, they're just going to be fired up. And I'm, go I'm going with everybody else. Liberty's just going to lay the points on UMass. We're all on the same page. Auburn, New Mexico State, a uh, bit of a revenge game for Hugh Freeze. You know, he took that Auburn job probably not realizing he was going to have to face off against that Diego Pavia-led New Mexico State. A uh, bit of a look-ahead game as well for Auburn with the Iron Bowl coming the next week. All of us on the same page. Points, points, points. Anytime Diego Pavia is playing football, points. Uh, big matchup when it comes to the... Uh, we mentioned the New York Six Bowl, and that is SMU minus seven and a half again. Memphis. CT, we're on the same side here. Let me get your thoughts first. Memphis uh, plus seven and a half. What do you like? Uh, this is purely uh, hoping for the best for the Flames. SMU, I think, is SMU is better than Tulane. They're the ones that I'm actually more worried about um, when it comes to us getting to a New, New Year's Six Bowl. And this game could be really important for them to get a loss before getting to the American Conference Championship game. Because worst case scenario is if Tulane and SMU both get there without losing another game before that. So rooting against SMU, even though they're a very good team, give me Memphis plus seven and a half. I hear I, the emotional hedge, right? I, I, I'm with the agreement, but not so fast as Lee Corso said. I think SMU is determined to leave the American Conference with a championship before they go to the ACC. So that's why I'm going with SMU. Sure. You know, not to be selfish, but if the AAC had a set of stones, they would ban SMU from playing in conference championship games. But what do I know, right? <laughs> completely, completely off topic. So uh, number 17, who's not number 17, uh, in the college football playoffs. Tulane minus nine against FAU. Uh, I think Tulane had a bit of a scare last week. Uh, yeah, the game's at FAU. Great stadium, great time, uh, but not for me. CT, you're uh, you're laying the wood going Tulane money line. Yeah, you know, I'm going with the JMU strategy. You know, no way Tulane loses, so Tulane money line. I love, love where your uh, head's at there. Uh, Louisville, Miami. Interesting game. Louisville okay. in the top 10. Uh, and Ray, you're with me. Over seven, over 47 and a half points. Give, give me, give me your, give me the vibes for that game. It's going to be a high scoring game. I mean, Louis, it's going to be a back and forth toss up between with, with Louisville and Miami. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm going with the over here. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. I'm at the point in this college football season where unless it's, Iowa, Rutgers, Northwestern, and that over-under is under 49, I'm taking the over. Give me the other way. There's no reason that two competent Power 5 teams, any college football teams, 
can't score seven touchdowns in 16. You, you, I just can't fathom it. And we're mentioning the over with the points as well, and you're seeing the rankings here. Louisville's ninth in the country. Like, Louisville needs the points to start, you know, if they want to get into a playoff conversation. Yeah, and, and, and Miami's frisky. Miami, my, the game's at Miami. You know it's going to be uh, ruck. It's going to be a ruckus atmosphere for sure. So, uh, that's, CT. That's my, yeah, that's my thing with the game. I mean, I put them in the uh, round robin parlay um, yeah. that I talked about, but it's something where that line doesn't make sense to me. Even, I mean, this is saying that even if Louisville was at home, they'd be a five point favorite. And I disagree with that, um, with what we've seen from Miami this year. So, that line feels awfully short. Tells me that Miami is going to put up a fight um, and could be winning that game. So, that's why I like them on the money line there. Um, now, looking at the last four games or so, is there one that stands out to both of y'all as maybe your favorite um, of those or favorite of the entire week? We have a lot of the same picks, which is uh, pretty yeah. cool. Um, I, I think Georgia just rolls Tennessee. I, I'm not. I think Tennessee's done. They just after lost. They, they got. The, yeah. After seeing the Missouri game last week, as you know, I, I would have put Tennessee slightly closer, put put this game on the money line. But after that performance last weekend, I was like, no, but I, I have to put, you know, Georgia at at 10. Yeah, Tennessee, they're, 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 they were riding high last season, bit of a hangover. They're done. It's that classic. They're checked out. They had college football playoff aspirations start the season. They've checked out. I don't care where this game is. Georgia is just rolling teams right now. Um, we're about to see. Y- y'all are probably ahead of me because I'm streaming uh, from my phone. They're either going to be one or two. I think they should be two, but I think they they just stroll through uh, Tennessee. CT, your pick? Yeah, I mean, I would. Uh, Georgia just jumped up to one. Ohio State just fell down. That's crazy. Uh, that being the case, no, I honestly would, would have to say Georgia as well. I don't want to be boring, but – it's something that I I was concerned about them to beginning of the season. I didn't think our schedule was going to be tough. I didn't think they'd be tested. Uh, but Carson Beck has really started figuring it out. I think Brock Bowers being out for a couple of weeks really made him like stop relying on his crutch in a way, and it's really opened that offense. So now with Brock Bowers back as well, that offense is amazing. And it, I've said it multiple times throughout the weeks, but Joe Milton is just not that great of a quarterback. Uh, so give me Georgia minus 10. No, I'm with you. Love that we're on the same page. Ray, last word to you. Send us home with something good. Oh, man. What do I send us with, man? We're at, what? Flames 10-0. and 0. Obviously, the disrespect is there. It's no doubt. But, guys, just keep winning. That's all I got to say. Woo! Woo! Give us a woo, CT. Oh, gosh. Woo! 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 All right, Woo! Leesburg, Florida. Let's hear it, Chad. It's real Florida. It's old Florida, and it's close to all of the Central Florida attractions. Crystal clear natural springs in one of the largest chain of lakes. The beautiful lakefront city of Leesburg offers the best in outdoor adventures, fishing, and quaint shops and restaurants on historic downtown Main Street. Come visit and see how welcoming a hometown city feels. Experience Leesburg the way Florida is meant to be. Shout out, Leesburg, Florida. Uh, super cool. I was actually looking on the map. It's near everything. It is. It is. I, you know, being a Florida native, Tampa, Florida. I mean, it's a. Uh, it is. That was a Leesburg. Shout out Leesburg. Shout out to yeah. the town of Leesburg for throwing us an ad. Yeah. If you get us some Leesburg gear, uh, I'm all in. So uh, if you enjoy also, that, it shows segment, that if you if you want to uh, if you want to pay for an ad. We'll run it. Yeah. We beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. We will we'll take on yep. anything. On. Yeah. You, you, you really love your dorm. We'll run an ad for your dorm. We're in. Yep. Do, I don't know. Well, do they number dorms anymore? Dorm eight. Dorm? Is that still a thing? Remember dorm eight was like, yeah, God, I, God, I, God, I, God, I hope we'll not. Uh, I was dorm four guy. Uh, if some dorm wants to run an ad, we'll run it. We'll run it. We're, we'll run we it. are in, we are capitalists. We will do whatever. Uh, is needed completely but uh we are going to bring in uh, a very special guest uh one of the biggest college football podcasts out there 
uh, focuses on the group of five. Now, you could throw on Josh Pate, Unnecessary Roughness, uh, Cover Three, and they're going to be talking about Power Five. They're going to be talking about Ohio State. They're going to be talking about Michigan, all that stuff. But there's a podcast out there designed just for the group of five, and that is the group of five guys. And I love checking out their content. And we are lucky to be joined by Jeff Murphy from Group of Five Guys. So bring him in, Producer 3000. Take it and never stop. Can't win, yeah, I can't win. I can't win, yeah, I can't win. Welcome What's on, going Jeff on, fellas. Murphy. What's going on? How are, how are we doing this Tuesday night? Man, I'm doing fantastic. Sorry about being a little bit uh, late. We just finished our live show where we gave a lot of credit to Liberty Flames, let me tell you. That's what we like to hear. That's what we like we, to hear. We, we appreciate it. Again, we are joined by Jeff Murphy from... Uh, a group of five guys. So it's been an interesting season, especially in the Conference USA. Talk about what's kind of happened. What were your thoughts in the beginning of the season when it comes to Conference USA and Liberty? And kind of how has that changed to where we're at right now going into week 11, 12? Yeah. 11, 12? Yeah, week, 11. week 12. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I think that, uh, you know, Conference USA coming into it, obviously Liberty being a new team, definitely thought they were going to be, you know, one of the top teams in the conference for sure. I think most people thought Western Kentucky was going to gonna be probably the top team. We've seen just – they've just not been the same offensive juggernaut that we've seen. Um, and then also didn't know, you know, with Chadwell coming over from Coastal, how that was going to mesh. Um, and then really the surprise, other surprise teams got to be New Mexico State, who's made it to the championship game, uh, solidified their spot. Um, and then a couple teams that really I thought were going to be better. I thought UTEP was going to be better. They just have, have not looked good all year. Um, and then you really just got to give credit to what Chadwell has done at Liberty. I mean, a lot of question marks, especially on the defense side of the ball. And what he's done with Caden Salter, I think, is absolutely incredible. I mean, he especially the last few weeks, Salter has looked like the MVP of this conference. I mean, not only throwing the ball, but running it as well. Nobody's been able to stop that ground game. So you just got to give credit to them, the, you know, the players and the coaching staff for, for coming in and just dominating this conference right away. Yeah, Jeff. Um, you know, what is the, in your mind, I mean, you guys have been uh, doing this for a long time and, and really passionate about the group of five and giving the group of five the love that, that we know that we deserve. Um, what do you think it is with the college football playoff committee uh, with really just rankings in general? You know, where does the, is it, you know, I, I call it disrespect. Where does that lie? You know, and why is that? Why do they, why in, in your mind do they view group of five teams uh, just as a less than like, we shouldn't even be in the same category uh, as power five. I don't really know why they, they view it that way other than I think it's just just the, the money where they want to keep it, you know, in a smallest possible group as possible. And, and that's why they mainly only talk about Michigan, Alabama, Georgia, you know, used to be Clemson, but they're irrelevant now and Ohio State. So it, when they can just keep all that money in a smaller pot, it's more for the people that are at the top. And that's why, you know, you don't you don't see a lot of these power five schools. I know they do it, especially with the Sun Belt. Like they don't schedule Sun Belt teams anymore in their non-conference. So because they know they can get beat, it's not an easy out for them. They want to schedule, you know, like the Abilene Christians of the world, you know, some of the smaller one double A schools. Um, and I don't think anybody wants to schedule Liberty, especially after this first season either. Um, so I, 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 it's gotta be a money thing. That's always what it comes down to anyways. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of because having Liberty ranked 20, 25th in the nation right now is, is a joke to me. I mean, if you yeah, look did, at some of the I teams did. that are in front of them, it just makes no sense. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did, I, I saw too, uh, before you came on, I was looking at the rankings and I, I kind of went on a rant about Iowa. They moved them up six spots after beating Rutgers. Six. They went from 22 to 16th in the country, which is unbelievable. They beat. They lost to Minnesota by two, right? They got absolutely trounced by Penn State, 31 nothing. And then they've won games by like one, two. I mean, they barely squeaked by Northwestern, 10-7. It's like, why are we ranking? I mean, it's like we're ranking these teams. Like you said, it, it has to be. It's money. I mean, it's like yeah. 
Where where can we put another Big Ten team? Okay, Iowa, they're seven and two. All right, let's rank them. Sixteen, they beat Rutgers. Like, it does not make sense to me. And no. normally I would stop you for Rutgers slander, but I'm very <laughs> very disappointed uh, in in the Scarlet Knights uh, from Saturday. But so Jeff, I'm not gonna lie, the start of the season I was not thinking about New Year's six bowls. It's not something that I had in the back of my mind. But on Saturday, I just went, all right, this is on the table now. Talk about some of the other uh, G5 teams that are in the hunt for that New Year's Six Bowl. Uh, tell us a little about who kind of we're going up against and, and what's what's going to have to happen for Liberty to get that spot. Well, I think some of the other teams, I mean, right now Tulane is ranked number 17th, I believe. Um, and I, we saw them live in the opener against South Alabama, who who is a really good team this year. That they've kind of underachieved, and the Sun Belt is so tough. But at the beginning of the season, they were healthy, and Tulane just they flat out beat them up and down the field. But if you look over their last uh, four or five games, I mean, they lose. You know, they beat North Texas by seven, they beat Rice by two, ECU by three, and then last week Tulsa by two. So they, you know, they have some injuries on the outside at receiver, but you got to think that they can, they should be able to beat Tulsa by more than two. So I'm not sure what's going on with them. That's not a great uh, track record over the last, you know, three or four weeks, but they've consistently moved up. So as of right now, until Tulane loses, I think that's going to be the tough, you know, the toughest person to catch, but they placed uh, UTSA the last game of the season, which is probably going to determine who, goes to the American championship and UTSA as hot as any other team right now in the American besides probably SMU. So if UTSA beats Tulane, which I think is by, by solely based off of the two teams, how they've been playing. Cause a lot of this just depends on who's, who's playing the best ball at the, at the end of the season. Right. It's usually a lot of the time what happens in the, in these to get into the conference championships. So obviously Liberty's got to beat New Mexico state. You know, they got to win out. Um, that has to happen. Um, it's, SMU has had the easiest road in the American as far as their in-conference schedule. They avoided Tulane and UTSA. So I think as long as they take care of business, they got a big game against Memphis this week. Um, they should be able to beat Memphis, but it's going to be a tighter game than I think people think. If they win out and they win the American championship, that'll be the next team that Liberty is going to kind of have to square off against I mean, they'll be, you know, they've had, you know, they lost to Oklahoma this year. And I, I want to say they think they lost to TCU as well. So I think they were two lost SMU team. But the way that everybody, especially the committee, looks at Conference USA, I mean, if they went, if they're the American champs, I think that's going to be the next, the next team. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think it goes, it, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but, you know, it's a what have you done lately? Like, AKA, what did you do last year? To, and then, yeah. you know, we'll start, rank, you know, that's what they look at. I mean, that's why Tulane is where they are at. They beat USC in the Cotton Bowl, and they had a leg up to start the year, you know, being ranked. And so it is what it is, I guess. But, um, you know, talking about the other team in the state that a lot Liberty fans, you know, you probably see it on Twitter, love to go back and forth with is James Madison. Um, you know, they, they sit at 10 and 0 this year, too, and are having a great year. Um, you know, the one thing that I think, you know, is interesting you know, they're not eligible for a bowl game which personally i think is absolutely ridiculous because like there's not an advantage there's not a competitive advantage for having you have you seen an fcs a division two school goes from division two to fcs they don't there's not like it's not like it's an fbs team dropping back and yeah. you know there's no competitive advantage so i don't understand why james madison can't go to a a, a bowl game but you know, the, the, the love that JMU gets uh, na nationally, uh, you know, do you think that's because they were a powerhouse at FCS level and now they're kind of moving up and they're continuing to do it at the FBS level? And then, you know, talking about Kurt, C Kurt Signetti and what he's done there, um, you know, looking forward into the future for a group of five coaches, you know, people always want to, they're going to pick them, right? So it's going to be, Signetti's going to be gone. Willie Fritz, he's going to go and take a big job. Um you know, do you think that Signetti is that next guy to kind of get one of those big power five jobs based off what he's been doing at James Madison? I think he's definitely a candidate. I think, I mean, he's, I th believe he's 65 years old. So he's a little bit older than most of your kind of younger candidates that 
kind of catapult themselves from the, the group of five level to the power five level. So I don't, I don't know if that's something he's necessarily interested, but he spent a lot of time at JMU and, and you got to give credit to him and what he's been able to do. I mean, they were a powerhouse for so long. They make the jump. They, they had an incredible season last year. And then obviously this year they're undefeated. Um, but I don't, I don't like the rule either. I don't get it, but you knew what the rule was in place before the season. If, if JMU is 500, nobody's saying a thing about the rule, but it's the fact that they're undefeated. So, and here's the other thing is game day is going to uh, Harrisonburg this weekend. That is a whole different animal. It has a whole, there's a lot of distractions. That's a lot of pressure. They're going to be on, you know, on the national stage and app state is playing some really good football right now. So I don't think that's, I mean, they still got two games left. Now I, I, one of the, our fans that's in our live chat was saying that the Sun Belt has already said, if the NCAA approves the waiver, that they will let them play in the Sun Belt Championship game. We'll see if that happens. They've been not denied every step of the way, but now that game day is going to, I just feel like that's a lot of extra pressure now on the NCAA to possibly overturn this. But they got to they got to beat App State and they got to beat Coastal, which both are in the hunt still for the East Championship uh, to represent the East. So this is not an easy out for JMU, and they lost their top defensive end to injury for the rest of the season. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, but JMU has got to take care of business and they got to get approved. So it's going to be tough for that. Well, I, I know Jeff, I know college game day is going to Harrisonburg, but anytime group of five guys wants to come to Lynchburg, you guys have done the group of five tour. You've gone to a bunch of places, Liberty fans. I hope that you guys listen to their show. You listen to what they've, uh, have said about the group of five. Um, they have given Liberty love. And hopefully they continue to do that. We got to do our part, of course. But, you know, anytime you guys want to come to campus, we will show you a good time and really show you a great group of five atmosphere. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, we're, our next travel date is going to be championship weekend. And the Conference USA Championship is definitely, you know, at the top of our list. We just got to figure a few extra things out and hopefully be able to make a, uh, you know, decision here in the next week or so on what we're going to do. But, We'll definitely keep everybody posted, and, and it's it's a place we've been wanting to get to. So, what better weekend possibly than uh, championship weekend? Yeah, Jeff, and I can promise you that uh, Lynchburg and Williams Stadium is going to be absolutely rocking that Friday in December. Uh, Jeff, but, before we let you go, tell us a little bit about uh, your Group of Five podcast. Where can we find y'all's content and learn a little bit about uh, more about what y'all do? Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me on and. Uh, Find us on social media at group of five guys across all the social media platforms, all the, you know, streaming apps, Spotify, uh, Apple podcasts, everything there for our audio version. We also do a video version on YouTube, uh, Twitter and Facebook. So, you know, we're, every, we're everywhere on all the platforms and then uh, group of five guys.com. You can check out our story, what we're kind of about. We also got some merch there as well. So, you know, we're just out here to, to spread the word that group of five football is real football for real fans. So. It is. That's what that's what we're about. Love it. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, Jeff. No, I love that, Kyle. And uh, I'm sure you agree with me. I tell Liberty fans all the time: follow national college football. Yes, obviously follow what's going on with Liberty, but get out there and listen to the other podcasts. And that Group of Five podcast is absolutely a great one to jump in and listen to, to learn about what's going on out there. What are the other schools that we are competing against, not on the field, but in the polls for that New Year's six spot? Yeah, no question. Yeah, group of five guys, they do a great job. You know, the uh, Always Talking Ball podcast, they they have recently, um, you know, really started talking about Liberty. It's run by a, a Liberty alum. And so, yeah, Richie, 100% agree. Um, Liberty fans, Spread your wings a little bit. Get out there. Start listening to uh, to some other uh, podcasts and watching some other people um, because yeah, it helps helps your knowledge, your fan fan base knowledge, right? Know know what other teams are doing and you know gives you some stats. So when you go up against that JMU fan on Twitter, you can blast him with some good statistics for sure. Keep listening to us. Don't don't get me wrong. Yeah, like, like and subscribe. subscribe. Yeah, sure. come on now. Like, yeah, we should be. Yep, we're number one choice as always. Yeah. As always, but you need something in the two slot. Group of five guys. Uh, 
Josh Pate. There's a lot of great stuff. Oh yeah, uh, lots out of great there. stuff. Before we leave, Kyle, any thoughts on UMass little score prediction? Man, I think uh, you know we we got to stay focused week to week. I think this is the mm-hmm. you know, we've talked a lot about things that could happen. You know, our potential to uh, go undefeated. Like we we've we have talked about that, and um, but. You know we gotta we gotta play UMass and we gotta we got a tough a tough game ahead of us. Um, you know, like Brendan said, they got a tough defense and they're always gonna have a tough defense. You know, I think that they're probably gonna try to pressure Caden when they can, try to heat him up, uh, try to get him to make make some mistakes, try to turn the ball over. Um, but they they gotta defend the run, gotta defend the option, and um, so yeah, I think we just gotta stay focused on UMass. But score prediction, man, I think the Flames win big again. I think that you know we come out um, and you know we we set a tone quick and early. I think that the disrespect is uh, something that has continued to happen. That Chadwell has continued to preach. That Coach Scott is continuing to yell at them constantly in the weight room about how no one has respected us, and it's not fake either. It is true, and I think our players feel that. And so when you give them a little bit of extra motivation to go hang a hundred on somebody if they can, they will. And we all know. That Jamie Chadwell, if he can score 100 points, he will score 100 points, and he's not going to apologize for it. And then he's going to go into the press conference and say, we just kicked the snot out of UMass. Like, what what else do we need to do? All right, we'll go do it against UTEP. So I think that our guys are going to be focused. They're going to be ready, and it's going to be a big Flames win on Saturday. I'm with you. I am ready for another 50-burger. Kyle, thank you, as always, for, for joining us and giving us such great insights and and, and uh, all of your takes are awesome. All of our guests, thank you so much. The comment section was just popping off uh, this Tuesday night. So it was great to see uh, just a great community of Liberty football fans getting together to talk about what we love most. So as always, stay hydrated, stay blessed, stay fly. We'll see you next Tuesday night. Plan. Thank you.